Well, folks, welcome to Outside the Zone. I'm Jesse Crawl. No, this isn't Jordan Furby. He did not get, you know, facial reconstruction surgery. This is our new sports reporter, Jacob Russo. You might see him at the games. Um, he was shooting a couple games tonight. It's definitely an exciting time, you know, around KCU now. We have three sports guys, essentially. He's, you know, kind of a hybrid, but he'll definitely be shooting some sports for us. Jacob, you know, I know you went to Florida State, you know, famous Jameis Winston. Um, you know, tell us a little bit more about yourself so you can give, you know, the fans uh, some in insight on your life. Uh, well, I have loved football my entire life. I played football in high school. I tried to play in college, was not very good. I, uh, I am very happy to be out here in Sioux City. I love it. I've only been here for a couple months, but so far, you know, it's awesome. The sports are great. It feels like Florida. There's a lot of passion in the uh, high school stands that I've been seeing. I was out in, in Ponca. It was, everything was exciting. And then I was at East West and Morningside and, you know, the student sections felt like it was like a college game. You know, I went to Florida State. The student sections there are incredible. And so kind of bummed that, you know, we didn't get Scott Frost. The Huskers stole him from us, but we got Willie Taggart. So he's going to be pretty good for us down at Florida State. Florida State starts on Monday. So I was going to say, you said it feels like Florida. I get that. You just wait till the winter, boy, because that snow is going to hit yeah, you I'm, I'm not. I'm not excited about that at all. Yeah, but you know what I'm excited be. about? You know, we're excited about the highlights right here. And there was a couple of highlights, folks, that, you know, uh, we got a little miscommunication with for, uh, you know, some of our affiliates, but we're going to check them out right now. Um, Helan, um, they were trying to, you know, bounce back or, you know, get that second win underneath their belt from last week, taking down East. And Here's a field goal from them right here. And, you know, Glenwood, they uh, they give uh, Helan their all right here. But, you know, Helan, just stunning. You know, this offense is just taking them down. You know, just a great touchdown pass right here. They looked great last week, and they look great this week, too. What was it, 44 so. nothing against East? Yeah, they, you know, they're just amazing offense right there. And just a great hit right there. You know, they could wrap up. And, you know what, they're not <laughs> wrapping up. I thought they, they could wrap up. They can up. hit them hard, but they can't bring yeah, them down. Yeah, exactly. You know, you just got to take them down and go for the knees. You know, you can't go for the shoulder pads. You got to use yeah. those arms. You can't just use your shoulders. Exactly. But a great, you know, caught up uh, touchdown pass right there. But, yeah, Helan, they're gonna actually going to win 21-7 to against Glenwood. So they're 2-0 and on the season. And, uh, you know, the Crusaders, they're going to try to, you know, take that undefeated record against Western Christian, you know, who we'll look at in a little bit. But we're also going to look at our, another game we're unable to show you tonight. We got some North and this looked like a basketball score. Yeah. After you told me, I thought it was a joke. I didn't I didn't believe it either. I went on North, North High's Twitter and I saw the final score said 99 to 81. And they lost that game. They scored 81 points and they lost. That is just an incredible, it, it's, a, it's almost it seems almost impossible for something like that to happen. Well, you see some of these highlights, and, you know, the run in the ball just at will on it. It's, it's not it's, 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 it doesn't even score look behind like it's anybody 36. is. It, it's weird because usually when a team scores that many points, 81 points, something yes. crazy like that, the other score is usually, like, 12. Yeah. You know, it's something really small. Well, and he, He's going to pass the scoreboard again. Let's see where it's at. Yeah. Oh, but, we can't, oh, see, it. can't but, see it. But, yeah. You know, usually one team is just dominating the other team. Mm -hmm. And just in this case, it just seemed like nobody knew how to tackle. Nobody no. knew how to play defense. And that's the thing, too, is, you know, North, uh, they were coming off a win last week. And we were excited for them. And, you know, we loved them scoring points. But I wish we could have, you know, 99 to 81, we could have came out on top there. And it's um, not often you score 81 points and lose a football game. Exactly. That just doesn't seem Like I said, it's real. a basketball game. Yeah, it, I mean, and even then, that's a pretty decent score for a high school basketball game even. And just yeah. the fact that just the fact that, uh, that North wasn't able to come away with the win there is just mind-boggling almost to as, me. As sports reporters, though, you know, going to that game, I'll be honest, I would have been a little excited because out of, we'd have been in and out. Oh, yeah. Nothing against the teams. We got to, you know, sometimes got to speed this process up a little bit when we're shooting games. We probably would have been out in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Touchdown, sure. touchdown, touch back, forward, yeah. back, forward. We got a lot of exercise, I'll tell you that much, you know, walking yeah. back and forth. But it was uh, it's one of those games where it, uh, it definitely was. It would have been exciting to be at. How do you think? You got a question. Oh. Yeah, we got a question uh, from uh, asking, uh, with the score being so huge from the North game, have either of you seen any scores like that in high school football before? I've never seen that before. My high school back home was really bad, like my high school football team, and we'd be getting blown out of the water all the time, but I never saw a score that high. We'd lose maybe 52 to nothing, never never something like 99. I was going to say, yeah, unfortunately, I was the team that you were playing because I actually, in high school, uh, we were beating team 6 3-0. to zero. Oof. So, you know, we didn't let up the gas, but, you know, that's what winners do. I actually, when I covered, uh, you know, college sports as well, St. Thomas, go Tommies. Um... I think it was 87 to 6. Oof. Yeah, a college football. So, yeah, that's... You know, the skill level is a little higher, but yeah, 87 to 6. They actually went on to the national championship game that year. So, 
It made a little sense that the offense was yeah. so good. How much do you think that Jefferson wanted that one extra point? How much do you think they wanted three digits See, but on that's that scoreboard? Thing. You can't get three digits, so it looks like zero, so it's 81-0. So, hey, unfortunately, they win. I think, but I think just to, to be able to break a scoreboard, that's never anything that a football play, yes. or a football team has ever been able to do, and I bet they wanted that one more that just on, to get that on one. On the news site, though, or you always see it on uh, news outlets, I should say, that you know, team scores 147 points, and then you look at the score of the other team, to six or right. you know something ridiculous where it's like okay enough's enough where's the mercy yeah role? somebody needs to somebody needs to let it. espn know about that though yeah. because that's in- incredible that's yeah, something that, that's gotta be that's gotta be some sort of side. record it, yeah. it has to be something like that i've never ever heard of something that close like that before it was great i love it yeah. but you know what also i love tonight was the woodhouse game of the week and you know someone that stood out to me was jt van holt he was actually i don't even know what to call it player of the night plays of the night we have a play of the night but Player of the night. Yeah, he, case, yeah, he's yeah, player of the night. I mean, he he's the quarterback and he's taking the kickoffs. I mean, you That's rarely see you that. But look see. at him. Look at the blockers in front of him, and he he had the blockers. He just got tripped up around the twenty yard line right here. If he just would have high stepped that one, it would have been in the end. Or he would have been in the end zone for six. Barely lost it there. Exactly. You know, it's, but it's this close, this close to breaking it. I've never I've never even heard of a quarterback returning kicks before. That's such a uh, a an alien thing to me. And but he can do it because he's just that good. And he's, he's a man. That's what he is right here. And you know. A couple of breakdowns right here from the Nighthawks offensive line. You know, Western Christian kind of hung in with them just a little just bit a little here bit, and there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but, you know, BHRB and Van Holt, you know, you like to call you it Van Holt and company. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it might as well be, you know, like how. There's... I mean, like, look at this run. The, man, mean... the, man, can't, the man can't be brought down. He's, he won't be brought down. As Miley Cyrus once said, I can't stop, I won't stop. <laughs> that's, you know, that's how it's going to go for them. Right. And, and, and you know, I feel like if he continues to play at this level, I don't think anybody can really stop him. No, and it's going to be exciting. I haven't looked on his Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is. You know, where is he going to college? But shit. But wherever he goes, you know, he should be uh, he should be going, you know, northwestern door, somewhere in that area where, you know, up up there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, stays in the area. Yeah, and, and you know what? Whatever team does manage to get him is going to get a – fantastic valuable asset exactly. for their team and to be able to compete at a high level for the you know the entire time he's there at the school and if bhrv wants to win another state title they're already top ranked so you know all you got to do is just keep winning and winning and winning it seems easy it and sounds easy but it you know, is but i think tough. i mean we learned norfolk catholic couldn't do it and yeah. that was the beginning of the, that was week one mm-hmm. but you know i think as long as they stay free of injuries. They keep, you know, moving, keeping playing at this pace that they're playing out right now. I really do think they've got a really good shot. Exactly. JT Van Hall, you just got to lean on him, and, you know, we'll see what happens from the BHRV Nighthawks. But we got, you know, more some more games on dockets. This is actually your game that you shot. And- yes, and I was there. Ponca is... You know, they have a lot of energy. Their coach brings a lot of energy to Troy Evans, the, he's a man. The, the staff. Uh, you know, this guy right here, Gage McGill, he is their – he's their guy. You know, he's their running – or he's actually a wide receiver, but he plays – you know, they do a lot of jet sweeps. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of handoffs to the wide receivers and that kind of stuff. And, you know, he scores quite a bit for them. And he also plays defense. You know, as we'll see right here, he also gets a nice pick here off of BRLD's quarterback. You know, um, he he looked like he was going to break this one for a second. He got around, but he <laughs> didn't the big quite boy. get there. And um, I actually made a mistake earlier. I want to mm-hmm. I want to rectify that. I said I put in the bottom that it was Ponka that had won. I mixed up the scores. In fact, Ponka actually lost to BRLD tonight. They lost 30-20. to 20. They took that lead into halftime. It was a 14-8 lead oh, okay. into half, but they actually ended up losing it somewhere along the way. I had to leave. I went... You know, to the east-west. You just got to hustle back and forth. morning side, so I kind of wasn't able to see how that all got wrapped up. But mm-hmm. you know, BRLD they looked pretty good too. They they are a bit more spread. They're a bit more wide open. Mm-hmm. Punk is gonna jam it down your throat, but BRLD will. BRLD likes to spread out, likes to get it the ball to their wide receivers. Ponka, they like to, to power it up the middle. I was going to say, you weren't here last year, but they lost a lot of key pieces, and you know, I'm not surprised because Troy Evans he he doesn't rebuild, he reloads. And it's just astounding to see, you know, that Ponca, uh, you know, offense, defense, that whole team just being ranked so high. And, you know, um, also BRLD, props to them for getting that, you know, that tough, gritty win because that's, that's you know, what you want out of your team. So mm-hmm. just an exciting game that you were able to go at and, you know, just being able to watch that. I mean, sometimes I get jealous filming these games. You know, we had a lot of great games on Doc tonight, you know, obviously – we can't be, you know, ten different people. And we can't go to all these right. games. Yeah, but, it's, you know, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of difficult with so many teams, yes. so many games going on at once. We can't get them all, but you know, they're they're always fun to go to. Every game is fun. I have I, I've only been doing it for two weeks, but mm-hmm. those four games that I've been to so far have been just a great time. And at East West, the energy was great. At the oh, morning at Olson, going. you know, it was it was just 
it was fun. You know, I got to interact with some students on either side. They're both just jacked. You know, they're always excited. They're always, you know, ready to go, ready to see their team win. Yeah. It, uh, West, you know, trying to win their first game against East, and they they couldn't pull it off tonight. And I and it no. just seems like. I, it just seems like even though West looked really good, they looked like a good mm-hmm. team. They looked great last week. It just wasn't working for them. Yes. You know, it just didn't work out. I don't know what it is about East. I don't know what their kryptonite is about. Like, I guess that might be West's kryptonite or something, but it just wasn't there. Yeah. And and they had a lot of chances. You know, they had that huge touchdown that we saw. That got called back by from a penalty, actually. Like, there was a block in the back, and they had to bring it back. And Ooh, so, you know, they had tough. this – why great they just missed opportunities honestly is what is what cost the wolverines that game which is a shame because you know it, it would have been cool to see him win you know just because just the story there 1997 i was one year old when <laughs> last time they won you know so it's it, that's a it's a crazy thing that they yeah. were you know that they it's been so long that it's it's happened and it's got to happen eventually but you know maybe it's gonna be, it wasn't it's gonna, this it's year gonna be exciting so. honestly so where all the city programs end up and you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see some more highlights right here. You know, we'll see what's on the docket as well. And you know, we talk about one of those city schools. It's you know not in Sioux City, but you know Dakota Valley is as close as you possibly can get in South Dakota, and, and just right there. So. I know, and they're top yeah. ranked. I mean, this team is just absolutely you know lethal. I mean, the, look at the defense right here. It's got about Swarms. six, seven, eight black shirts. You know, hopping on top of or hopping on top of them, not <laughs> hopping on popping them, um, popping them when they tackle them. But um, you know, just that Dakota Valley defense and. I saw it last year while covering them. You know, that offense was just terrific. You know, like I said, fear the wing. You always got to fear the wing. And whoever shot this for us, um, I think it was Kenny or was it J-Mac? Was it, it was Kenny. Kenny? Okay. You know, I always struggle shooting Dakota Valley because of their wing offense. Um, you know, that wing T is just, oh, my gosh. You just kind of get confused so many times. And, you know, this offense is just so amazing. Whether they can pass it, they run it, they have wide receivers, they can spread it out, they can compact it. You know, this Dakota Valley team is going to be tough to beat. And, you know, they return to the Dome – um, you know, they were at the Dome, but first time in the class they are in right now. Um, and just an exciting game um, to be able to be back there. And they hope to, you know, use that as fuel because they actually lost in the championship game, unfortunately. But uh, I was talking to the coaches preseason. You know, they're motivated to get back there. They want to get back there. They want that championship. And I think they've got a good chance at, at winning uh, state. And you got to have a lot of you got to have a lot of athletes on your team to be able oh, to yes. run the wing T. You know, that's an offense that requires you to have, you know, those, those quick guys and guys who can block just a, a whole all-around team to be able to do that. And the fact that they're running it with success, the fact that they're, you know, able to accomplish what needs to be accomplished to run the wing tee effectively, it just shows that they, they do have a pretty good shot at, at yeah. turning at turning the season into something pretty great. I'm excited for that. J-Mac? We got a question from Tammy asking if we covered the OIPCIG G game. And I can honestly say, yes, we did. I, that was the game that I went to. So, I was going to say, you can touch on it, J-Mac. I mean, what did you see from it? Um, you know, um, you're obviously there. You're a good football mind. Um, from what I saw, it was um, basically a good defense mm-hmm. right off the bat. I mean, first chance that um, uh, East Sac County got in the end zone, in the red zone, interception right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And then just ground and pound. I mean, just perfect. And then not only that, a lot of good pass plays, too, a little quick – Quick pitches, pitches off to the off to the edge, and everything just going. Great, it was a great game for all in all. I was gonna say, so you know, basing that that all off that, um, you know, like you just said, that you know, that be able to dump off and being able to have that defense. Um, you know, what are you seeing from both teams that you think that you know is gonna be uh, positive for them, and uh, honestly, negative too. Um, positive, I see for um, OAPCIG was um, they 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 never put themselves down, no matter if they gave up a big play or not. They come back next play. They will stop the person behind the line of scrimmage. They they don't. They're not going to quit. Um, I I kind of call it that bend don't break <laughs> defense. Once you get inside the twenty, good luck. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a tough time scoring on them. Um, overall, I didn't see really much of a negative for either team. I mean, East Sac. Whoa, they got a running back that can just run you over. So pretty much all they all you got to do is flood the box and. You can, you'll stop them because they didn't really pass that much. That's probably their weakness is for East Sac is throwing the ball a little bit. So that's like old, you know, that's like uh, J Max old school. You know, Westwood they just like to ground and pound right there. Yeah, I was uh, I was watching the highlights, you know, during the show, and it looked like it was a really fun game. It looked like it was back and forth, even if the score wasn't didn't it necessarily reflect it. It mm. still looked like it was you know fun for both teams, fun to watch, fun to be at. You know, I bet you you had a great time there, J Max. Oh, so. Yeah. 
We got another question. Um, what area team do you think looks the strongest out of all of them? Well, that's a tough that one. That is tough. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I want them to be HRV tonight. Um, if they're talking Siouxland area or just city area? They're just saying area. So. And BHRV is yeah, mine. Yeah, I was going to say, BHRV, I mean, being able to beat Western Christian and be like, that dominant against the Wolfpack, who are, I mean, they're not, they're no joke. I mean, they're, they, they're good. They just, you know, coming, was it three, two, three years ago that they won the state? Three years ago? Yeah, I mean, they're coming off the state championship where these kids, you know, have that type of experience. They're freshmen, um, younger kids, you know, have been there. So um, this BHRV team, to be able to, you know, I wouldn't say manhandle, but dominate them like that. It was it was definitely, you know, some eyebrows are raising, and it's no surprise. I mean, BHRV always is reloading, and it's just exciting stuff right there. I would say another team maybe that, that isn't uh, – that's not BHRV. I would say Pierce, you know, okay. in Nebraska, the Pierce Blue Jays. They – I mean, they they handled Arlington. I think that's who they played mm-hmm. tonight, Arlington. They handled them. We saw the score on the yes. full screens. They they took them down, and they, and they, they, made, they made Norfolk Catholic, you know, look like – not Norfolk Catholic, you know, and Norfolk Catholic is a good team. We saw their, their highlights today. They're a very, they're still very strong. Mm-hmm. They're still a very good team. And Pierce kind of, Pierce kind of took control. Pierce has three really good players. They have quarterback Dalton Freeman. They have a running back. Uh, I believe his name is Tinker. And then they have a wide yes. out and a strike. Mm-hmm. And they're all just talented. they yes. they, they have so much talent on that team. They play both ways. They're strong. They're fast. I think Pierce Pierce has a really good chance to compete in their division, and 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 for the state championship, I think that they, you know, they they're coached well. They have, you know, a solid a solid team around them, and, and the support of their community. It just seems like they, they could they they look pretty strong to me. It's gonna be exciting, Jim. Mac, I mean, you uh, you want to answer that question? I mean, yeah, not I, Westwood. I promise <laughs> it's not Westwood. I was gonna say if you go by class, I might put Westwood in there as a tough one. All right, that's class fine. A. That's fine. That's fine. But overall, I would say, I mean, just by watching Dakota Valley, I mean, yes. just. They just look pure dominance. Um, team, another team people may, I always, I'm not going to throw them under the bus ever. Yes. West Lyon. Yes. They they just reload every year. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't say, you can't, there's. There's so many Iowa products too on that team. Well, or, you know, past Iowa, or past uh, teams, I should say, for West yeah. Lyon. I mean, yeah, I mean, and you can also, I never can say no to healing because they, they have. And SBL, I mean, if you start yeah. looking at the area, it's like, you know. It, just it, even in just the city, we've yeah. got some quality teams here. So it's exciting. You know, it looks I'll, like everybody's a little bit. I'll throw the I'll throw a question out there for you guys. Yes. Give me your top five teams. All right, now top you're now five? you're throwing me under the yeah. bus. Now, um, you know, all right. So, I will, I'll you know I'll side with him, Pierce. That's a huge win for Norfolk Catholic last week. Um, you know that BHRV. This is no one. You know, no order. I. I yeah, no orders, just yeah, a top five. Yeah, just J-Back. I can't, I can't five, put this right. one to no, five. Just, just, uh, no, just your five. We won't rank them. Okay. Your just five, five uh, best. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Pierce. You know, BHRV. Um, you know, honestly, that Dakota Valley team, It's it'll be interesting to see, you know, how well they can do because they're looking like the real deal right now. Um, and, you know, this sounds kind of weird with that Pierce, but Norfolk Catholic. I mean, yep. that's uh, – Just because just because they lose to Pierce yeah. doesn't make them a bad team. No. Pierce it, is a really good team. No. So, you know, one of those teams was going to lose that game. It's yes. just how it works. And, you know, it doesn't make the other team bad. Mm-hmm. You know, and I do think that Norfolk Catholic, they're in they're a division lower than they were last year. Yes. And they, they, they'll, be, they'll be in my top five too. I'd put them in mine as well just because, you know, they're consistently good. They consistently – you know, provide a, com- a competitive, you know, and they're they're coached well. They're always just dogs, you know. They've exactly, got that mentality. Yes. So, yeah, they're absolutely in my top five as well, I would say, even though they lost to Pierce. You know, that doesn't make them bad. And then, you know, you always got, you know, Keelan, SBL, those type of teams. And, you know, maybe I would round out the top I, five. I was going to say, but... I think I went over six or seven teams. But, <laughs> hey, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll see how it unfolds. And I was going to say, yeah. what, what are a couple more teams that you stood out to you? Um, You know, I think – the game today that I went to, uh, you know, Ponca, uh, BRLD, they, they looked, they both looked really good, you know, and I think that um, those smaller schools, sometimes they don't get as much attention and I feel like they, they deserve it because they do have, you know, they do have a strong team. They've got strong players on both sides, both teams do. And I do think that they've got, you know, they're not ranked near the top, you know, they're what, four or five, I think is what we have them mm-hmm. at. And, you know, they're still, they're still there. They're still competing Ponca, you know, uh, they they looked smash mouth. You know they looked like they're gonna run it up the middle, down your throat, out to the sides. That just they're gonna run it on you and they're gonna win. And that was like the that's the kind of the mentality I got from them, and I like that a lot. To say J Mac, let's uh, you know kind of transition into that to a team that you know we're talking about playoff teams to a team that hasn't made the playoffs in a while. I mean Ridgeview, 
Um, your boy, Ezra Miller. I don't have that game you up. You don't have the game Sorry. up? No, that's fine. But we can just talk about him in general because I talked to him in the preseason. Folks, I don't know. I mean, I'm 6'3". You're 6'4". Yeah. Um, this kid towers over me, and he's got some mass <laughs> he'd probably to him. Make, he'd probably make me look tiny, yeah, too. Exactly. So he's I'd... got some mass to him. And th- that's the thing, too. It's like, you know, you get the, a lot of these athletes, and you get a lot of these kids that, you know, are big – but they're not athletic. And I know that kind of – some people are probably like, what, is, what does he mean? And I go, you know, you've got some big kids. Speed, but not just speed, but agility. That yes. side-to-side movement's mm-hmm. important too. Not just moving downhill, but exactly. also being able to, to pull if you need to, to chase him, chase a linebacker down if you have to. If he's going to hit your running back, you got to be able to have that. And, you know, he's just one of those guys that's got it all. I was gonna say, you know? I'll throw in a little bit on him since I do, I do uh, look into the recruitments a lot on him. He actually went to San Francisco for a uh, – a camp mm-hmm. there, and he was actually named the MVP for the O line at that time. I so, believe I mean, it. Yeah, taking, I, I, yeah, I'm not so surprised I mean, he's either. He's taking I think. on four star, five star recruits, and he's just manhandling them. Yeah. I mean, the only downfall I see for Richview though is when I was at the game, all you got to do is put two men on his side, yep. and you can you'll get right. Him. And and that that that's what tends to happen sometimes when you've got just you know that one kid mm-hmm. who's above everybody else. You know, just you know, I think. The Rams had that problem. The L.A. Rams, I'm bringing up pro football. But Aaron Donald, you know, you put two guys on Aaron Donald, and, I mean, what are they going to do? Yes. I mean, that was, like, in the beginning, and now they've gotten that a little bit more. But, you know, I think I think for Miller, you know, he's got so much potential. And, you know, Iowa needs that. The Big Ten is, you know, full of stout defenses, just guys who are yes. can get to the, you know. Uh, he's not going to have to go up against Bosa. I think Bosa's probably going to leave Ohio State. But, yes. you know, you, you'll see that he could – those kind of guys, those kind of dogs, you need a dog to, to, to go up against them. We're going to get you a bell. Just well, yeah, just <laughs> question. Well done with the transition for Ezra Miller to the Hawkeyes. Perfect. We actually got a Hawkeye question for you. Let's hear it. Um, do you think this is the year the Hawkeyes will get a national championship trophy? <laughs> a national championship trophy? Yeah, that's, that's pushing yeah. a little bit. Big Ten, though? I will put them out of that discussion because, you know, they have that experience coming back a little bit with Nate Stanley. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they did lose Joshua Jackson. Um, in the, One of the, in the best quarterbacks, you know, yeah. to play. He's going to do great things for exactly. Green Bay. But That's it, tough. And, you know, you do lose a couple of running backs last year. Um, and I'll just throw in uh, Michigan State played tonight. They had a barn burner against Utah State. 38-31, to 31, I think, was the 31. final score, they, right? Yeah. It was a barn burner for them. They were actually down. Utah State. Yeah. yeah. The Aggies. Yeah, you know, Michigan, uh, Michigan, Michigan State might not be as. Yeah, as I don't know, but the Big Ten, the Big Ten's, the Big Ten is kind of stacked this year. Yeah, it is. You know, you've got Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, and then Iowa. You mm-hmm. know, and Wisconsin yeah, too. Wisconsin. You know, Nebraska. It, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really tough. Anything, anything can happen. But you know, you see these college football games. Yeah. Anything could happen. Yeah. It could, it could go sideways. Ohio State could have a Florida State like year this year, you know. You you have a coach that's not there half the time, you know, that could happen. But uh, you know, it's one of those things that college football is crazy. Yeah. So it's not completely out of the picture for Iowa to, you know, make it to the college football playoff. But, you know, I think maybe going ten and two and winning the Big Ten is, is definitely something that they can yes. do winning the championship. But yeah, so. it was definitely, you know, a great night, uh, you know, having sports zone and being out there, like I said, the rain held off. So it was just a beautiful night to be yeah, out there. I had my Jacob. rain jacket on. It was, I was sweating. You, you know, I, I thought it was, I thought it was coming. I had everything ready to go, but was, you know, it was a great night. Yeah. It was, great night say, it was exciting to, you know, finally have you be here right next to me. Um, you know, I'm just excited, honestly, to have, you know, another person with us, you know, in Happy the sports to be here. family. Really you know, we am. obviously have J-Mac behind the camera. We have Jacob in front of it right here. So Lots of J's here. I was going to say, J-Mac, J-Mac here, Jesse, and Jordan. Like, There's a lot of, I like it, a lot of know. J's going we'll, we'll on come up with but... a nickname there. So, um, But thank you for joining me. Yeah, and absolutely. Thank you for joining I'm us. I should say we're a team. We're not, I'm not yeah. just, you know, having a talk show right now. But, yes, right, yes thank you for exactly. joining us. Exactly, yeah. I'm glad I was able to do this and talk a little bit about football. It's been a minute and... You know, I'm happy to be here. Exactly. So. so it's exciting time. Thank you for joining us on the post post game show outside the zone. Um, join us next week for Sport Zone, and then obviously, you know, another post post game show outside the zone. But thank you so much, and have a great night. Enjoy your Saturday for college football.